Then, of course, I've got to tell you about the influenza epidemic, which was severe here in Gloucester, which was real bad. Yeah, yeah, you and mentioned took, that. And took the lives of a lot of young people. And they frightened us because the, uh, the state police, or the, uh, no, it wasn't the state police, it was the... Uh, Locals? No, not the locals, not the state police. It was the uh, National Guard who went around the houses looking for the very sick ones and take them away to these camps. Whoever was taken away never came back. And we were scared to did death. Did they come into the house without... Actually did, yes. Without uh, a writ or anything? They came into the house. They didn't have... They we didn't know anything about this uh, search and uh, the, these uh, warrants and things. They didn't warrants. have a warrant? No. They just came into the house with their guns and took away whoever they thought was very, very sick and couldn't stay home. Now, what year was this? It was, uh, this was in 1917, I think, or 1918. Whenever Are you they, familiar? Uh, all right. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. And uh, my brother was very, very sick. So we had this lady who lived right next door to us. There was two flats on the upper floor over down the fort. And she lived next door and she says, look, she says, don't worry, she says, we'll bring him in my house. We had a door between the two flats. She says, when they come to your door, I'll take him into my house and they won't get him. My brother was very, very sick too. And she says, if need be, she says, I'll use my shotgun. Because she wouldn't have got away with that. They went in, she wouldn't have been able to use a shotgun. But uh, the, the person involved, did he live? That, the, that they wanted to take away? Did he eventually live? My brother, yes. He had double pneumonia. And they were going to take him away? They would have taken him away had they known about him. But they didn't come to the house because they didn't find out about him. But they did take a lot of people away. We weren't allowed to be left any milk on our doorsteps and bottles. We just put our milk pitcher out. If we didn't get that out, we got no milk. And I remember standing in line at Barker's drugstore for these little powders they were given out. And I believe there was nothing but aspirin powders in them. They didn't have anything to cure? Yeah. No, nothing. They just gave you something to make you feel better, maybe, but a lot of people died. Now, does influenza have a different name now, or is it... Uh, what's they it? call it influenza. In those days, they called it, the Italian people called it La Spagnola. La Spagnola? La Spagnola. I don't know why, but that's what they called it. My grandfather had uh, smallpox, which they called, these people called Choliera. Choliera. You know, Choliera. No, no. You know what it's from? Cholera. Cholera, but that's yeah. not the smallpox. Yeah, I know, but that's what they call it. That's what they call it. My grandfather had cholera. Well, they all had that <laughs> back in Italy. Smallpox. Smallpox. A lot of people here in Gloucester today had smallpox in Italy. But now, these words are used differently. The influenza you're talking about is not what we now call smallpox, is it? No, no, no definitely word. not. Okay, okay. No. Because names keep changing. No, I... smallpox was uh, called something different. Guleri? No. Guleri is something different than small. No, I mean in English. In English, the names keep changing. In English, yes. I don't, th I don't know. Do we call the it... Italian English? people call that, uh, that flu that was called La Spagnola. I don't know why, but... And it was bad. Because we had no conveniences of uh, heating systems or uh, refrigerators or... Some of us didn't even have toilets or electric lights. So some conveniences come in handy. Some of the conveniences usually come in handy.